Good afternoon. Welcome to the 2023 Baccalaureate and Hooding Ceremony at Brevard College. It's an honor to be with you all this afternoon as we celebrate our candidates for graduation. Today's ceremony holds a special and unique significance to our community as we come together first for a traditional baccalaureate service, which is common for higher education graduates throughout the world, followed by the presentation of academic hoods to both our undergraduate and graduate students. As you will hear later, the hooding tradition goes back hundreds of years around the world, and for us at Brevard College, it represents a key component of our academic philosophy, that community and connection are vital to the sharing of knowledge. We see this every day most powerfully in the relationships built between our students and our faculty members. To begin our service and ceremony, I will offer a short blessing. O oh, great spirit whose breath gives life to the world and whose voice is heard in the soft breeze, we need your strength and wisdom as we stand on the edge of graduation. Cause us to walk in beauty. Give us the eyes ever to behold the red and purple sunset. Make us wise so that we may understand what you have taught us. Help us learn the lessons you have hidden in every leaf and rock, in every class and experience. Make us always ready to come to you with clean hands and steady eyes. Amen. Please join in singing, Be Thou My Vision. Still be my vision, O ruler of Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 10, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside, and after he sat down and the disciples have gathered around them, Jesus began to teach them. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are those who are mourning, they will be consoled. Blessed are those who are gentle, they will inherit the land. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice, they will have their fill. Blessed are those who show mercy to others, they will be shown mercy. Blessed are those whose hearts are clean, they will see God. 
Blessed are those who work for peace. They will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of their struggles for justice. The kingdom of heaven is theirs. Each year, we recognize one faculty member with the Exemplary Teacher Award. The recipient must demonstrate excellence in teaching, civility and concern for students and colleagues, commitment to value-centered education, and outstanding service to students, the institution, and the community. At Brevard College, this award is given each year to an exceptional, non-tenured faculty member who represents all of these qualities. This year's recipient will be joining a distinguished group of faculty. At this time, I would like to recognize all of the past recipients of this award that are still members of the Brevard College faculty. When I call your name, please stand and remain standing until everyone's name has been called so that you may be recognized as a group. Margaret Brown. Jennifer Frick Rupert. Jennifer Kafsky. Betsy Burroughs, Cameron Austin, <laughs> Kyle Lusk, Catherine Gresham, <laughs> Robert Dye, Catherine Rasmussen, Megan Kaiser, Andrian Bocafuso, <laughs> Hernan Biava. Sarah Mavidi and Allison O'Leary. Our tradition is to recognize the recipient of the prestigious award at this baccalaureate ceremony where they address the graduating class. This year's recipient is a dedicated and exemplary teacher. She serves the Brevard College community by teaching a variety of courses from general education and first year experience courses to upper level and specialized courses, including LINK, Voice of the River, senior projects, and internships. She exemplifies experiential learning in that her students not only learn through activities in the classroom, but in laboratory and field-based settings. She is also a collaborative colleague, working with other programs such as education, English, and wilderness leadership with scholarly programs and undergraduate research, and through mentoring relationships with teaching assistants. Not only is she an excellent teacher, but she is committed to improvement of her teaching through numerous workshops and conferences. This summer, she will be attending the Appalachian College Association's Teaching and Learning Institute, and will teach genetics to high school students at the North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics. She has shared her research projects in plant ecology with the greater Brevard community through presentations to the PISCA group of the Sierra Club, to Western Carolina University, and to our campus in the Food for Thought Forum. She coordinates the biology major and serves on several important committees, including chairing more than one of this year's faculty searches. She supports students outside the classroom as well, frequently attending campus events in both athletics and fine arts, and serving the wider community by volunteering at local festivals. It is a great pleasure to present this year's Brevard College Exemplary Teaching Award to Dr. Rachel Hillier. Thank you, Dr. Frick Rupert. Congratulations, graduates and welcome to the family and friends that are here to celebrate with you. You each have your own stories for how and why you ended up here. My story starts with a text message I got one summer asking me if I was interested in teaching biology as, as a visiting assistant professor at Brevard College. I said yes, not knowing where that decision would take me. Looking back, I'm thankful to have landed here at Brevard College, where we all have a chance to grow and learn. And I am both humbled and proud to share this moment with you today. 
Thinking back to my college experience, there were lots of opportunities where I'm glad I said yes. After my freshman year, I transferred to a new school, and the first day I stepped foot on my new campus, I was met with one such opportunity. The crew team was looking for new members. I had been a rower in high school and enjoyed it, but the Florida Tech team wasn't looking for rowers. They were looking for people to steer the boat. If you're not familiar with crew, they are usually four or eight people rowing the boat and one person keeping the boat pointed where it needs to go. And while it's not a physically demanding role, it's a challenging one, as you have to control a 60-foot, 2,000-pound boat while it's racing across the water. It is a role that as a high school rower, I had no interest in taking on. But as a college sophomore looking for ways to get involved, I said yes. It was an amazing and challenging experience. The first semester, I ran a boat into a channel marker. <laughs> but even then, my coach and teammates were there for me the next morning, helping me get back in the boat. Getting involved does not always come easily to me, and it wasn't until graduate school that something clicked. A few weeks before school started, the new cohort of graduate students had planned to get together. I didn't want to go, and when I said this to my dad, he told me, you need to go. These are the people you're going to be around for the next several years, and you might as well be friends with them. And so I went, and I went to the next social event and the next event after that. It worked, and I made some terrific friends. And that became the new rule. Go do things with the people around you. As I moved forward in school, and in my career, this shifted from a social role to a principle I generally applied for the rest of my life. And so when I came to Brevard College, this continued to be the norm. I didn't have much of a plan when I got that text message almost five years ago. But that first semester on campus, I showed up. And since then, I have showed up for our students, faculty and staff, and myself. I don't mean to tell you to say yes to everything all the time, or to do things that jeopardize your mental or physical health. I hope that it means you'll be present, open, and engaged with the world around you, whether it's at work, in your community, or in your personal life. Show up on time or at your own pace. Show up boldly or quietly. You don't have to know everything because you'll continue to learn as long as you show up as yourself. And as you show up, you will weave your safety net, a safety net of family and friends so that when something goes wrong, you won't have far to fall. I am standing up here incredibly grateful for the people that have shown up for me. Some of them are in the audience Many of them are sitting on the stage behind me. So congratulations to the class of 2023. Wherever you go from here, whatever you are doing, I hope that you show up. And I know that you will have people show up for you to support you in your challenges and to celebrate all your successes. Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9. Finally, my sisters and brothers, your thoughts should be wholly directed to all that is true, all that deserves respect, all that is honest, pure, decent, admirable, virtuous, or worthy of praise. Live according to what you have learned and accepted, what you have heard me say and seen me do. Then will the God of peace be with you. Thank you, Jamarcus. Good afternoon. You look beautiful. You look gorgeous. I'm certainly glad you're here as we celebrate you. 
and those who have walked this journey with you. So I am grateful to sit in this place, stand in this place with you. Uh, There's a rule that I have. I usually tell it as a story, but there's five B's of public speaking that some people usually joke with me about. Somebody know what those five B's are? Be brief, brother. Be brief. You've you've heard that, (laughs) right? So I'm going to try to stick to that. And if I don't, somebody need to blow a whistle or say something. All right? Can we work together? All right. I'm going to hold you to it. So in 1936, there was a gentleman by the name of Jesse Owens who had the pleasure in participating in the Summer Olympics in Berlin. Fascinating individual, brilliant guy. He won four Olympic medals during that time. But there was one event that still fascinates me. He won the long jump. He won the gold medal, but what caught my attention about him winning the long jump is he jumped into the world record books. It fascinated me, and it fascinated some individuals at the time, and they went to ask Mr. Owens, how in the world did you not only win, but how did you jump into the world record books? And he said, I made a decision that I would not touch the ground, that I would fly, that I would stay up in the air forever. It caught my attention and it made my heart patter because while individuals are always showing up in our world, telling us what we can do, what we cannot do, how we can do some things, Mr. Owens made a decision that day that he would defy gravity that he would do something no one else had done before, that he would stand in a space and show the world what it looks like to take all the limits off, all the self-defeating thoughts away, and run their own race. Tomorrow, I'm not going to tell you to jump off the stage. Please don't do that. But you will be at a place where you can soar. Your job is not to stay the same not to say I can be average, not to say I can fit the status quo, not to say I just have a degree from Brevard College, but you have everything that you need to jump and soar in ways that you and I can't even imagine. That's why I like this brother in the text that Jamarcus read. He gives a final statement to a group of people who are struggling with some things, who are trying to overcome some obstacles. And he says to them, finally, whatever is noble, whatever is pure, whatever is good, whatever is loving, think of those things that the power of your mind can take you super far. If you don't think you can accomplish something, guess what? You might not. If you don't think you can win it, you might not. If you don't think you can get the job, it might not happen, but it starts in our mind. Have you ever met someone who, when you talk to them, all they say is, "Uh, I can't do it, it's not going to work out, Uh, it is a bad day, it doesn't look good. You ever met one of those people and it drains the life out of you? We ought to be able to find some people and find ourselves and speak life into our own stories and be what this guy called Jack Canfield said, we ought to be reverse paranoids. Instead of saying it's not going to work out, we don't have it together, we ought to be able to say that I can do this, I can get the job. It does make sense. Yes, I might not be qualified in your eyes, but I'm still good enough for this thing. And we ought to be able to stand up, stick our chest out, and say I got it anyhow. A few years ago, I had the pleasure of being the guest chaplain to the United States Senate. When I said I was going to be the guest chaplain to the United States Senate, someone came up to me and said, Sherrod, how in the world can you be the guest chaplain to the United States Senate out of all of the clergy in the United States? Out of all the people who call themselves minister and religious leader, how in the world can you do what is impossible? I said, I asked. (laughs) But you and I ought to be able to get to a place in our own journeys 
where we take the limits off of ourselves and realize that our best days are not behind us, but they're still in front of us. That's why I like this guy named Paul who is talking and said, whatever is nice, whatever is noble, whatever is good, think of these things. And then he says, whatever you've seen in me that looks good, put it into practice. It's right on the edge of these words that he says he's going to run this race. He's going to run it with all that he has in him. And he says, I'm not going to look behind me, but I'm going to run looking right in front of me. 17 years ago, I sat in your seat. I walked up those steps, and I stood in front of the individual who was going to hood me. I enjoyed that gentleman. I talked to him all the time. I took classes with him almost all the time. And when I sat there and he hooded me, he whispered in my ear, son, you don't know the greatness that's in you, but I can't wait to see it blossom. And when you get there, just know that I'm waiting. When I got to Brevard College, he looked at me and he laughed, retired doing his own thing, and he said, Sherrod, I told you so. There will be people as you walk up here today that will hood you, hug you, laugh at you, and offer you words of wisdom. Don't walk away and leave them. Take them with you, and they will support you as you go on your journey. And at the end of it all, this gentleman by the name of Paul says, and the God of peace will be with you. When you walk off this stage today and when you walk off this stage tomorrow, I'll still be here in Brevard. Many of your professors, staff, friends will be all over the world. But that source that you call, whether it is God, the spirit teeming of the universe, that deep sense of knowing within will be with you. When I was sitting here where you were sitting, there are some people who started calling me Shadrach. I used to tell them my name is Sherrod. I, I know it might be unique, but it's not that unique. They were calling me Shadrach, 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 Shadrach. After about a month, I started calling myself Shadrach. Shadrach, Shadrach. I graduated from Brevard College, and while I had some hopes for some great stuff, I got into some mess. I did some stuff that I wasn't the happiest about, and I struggled, and I tried to figure out what to do in my life. And someone called me one day from Brevard College. They didn't call me Sherrod. They called me what? Shadrach. And all of a sudden, that name that I had always heard had a different ring to it. And it reminded me of three Hebrew boys in the Hebrew Bible named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they were at a space where they said they would not bow to what was going on. And if they did not bow, they would get put in this fiery pit, this fiery area. They did not bow, and they got put in that area. And when they looked to see what was going on, they found out that there was another source sitting in the fire with them. And I learned that God would be with me. So your challenge is simply to know that you ought to be able to go knowing that greatness is already in you. Tomorrow, you ought to be able to go. Go scared. Go with your knees shaking. Go anyhow. Go though you don't know what it looks like. You need to be able to go. Go with the spirit of your ancestors. Go with the fortitude of not knowing fully what the future is. You should go. Go. Don't you stay here. Don't be a carbon copy of what we are. Don't be a carbon copy of your professor. Be exactly who you are supposed to be in the world, not tomorrow, but now. Go with your head held high. Go though there might be obstacles. Go facing a future that is still bright, that is waiting for you. Go anyhow. Go not settling. And go, knowing that we will stand with you with our hands held high, still calling greatness out of you, because the best is still yet to come.
That was lovely. Thank you. Um, and now a part for you, graduates. We now summon you to participate through the litany that's in your program. As is tradition, we unite our voices and agree to uphold these ideals as we read through this passage in your program. So be founded. Throughout our collective human history, even as generations, times, and eras change, we are each called upon to contribute to this world. As faculty, staff, coaches, and others, we have done our best to faithfully carry out our responsibilities of leadership, in particular in passing on our gifts of teaching, mentorship, and support. At Brevard College, our motto is learn in order to serve. On the back of your program, you will find a detailed description of the significance of the academic regalia being worn today by faculty, staff, and students. In particular, there is a description of the academic hood worn around the neck and down the back. Today in our hooding ceremony, we will be awarding academic hoods to our graduating students. Our hooding ceremony recalls a tradition that dates back to medieval Europe in which faculty placed the academic hood over the head of the student, signifying a student's success in completing an academic program. At Brevard College, the student chooses a faculty or staff member for the honor of hooding them during the ceremony. This ceremony is the first step in recognizing a student's completion of a Brevard College degree, with the official conferring of the degree occurring during the commencement ceremony tomorrow morning. In addition to this traditional symbolic meaning of achievement, at Brevard College, the hooding ceremony recognizes the personal mentoring relationship between students, faculty, and staff that is at the heart of a Brevard College education. Our soon-to-be graduates will process onto the stage in groups of five, as I call their name. I will also call out the name of the faculty or staff member the student has chosen to hood them. Faculty and staff, when you hear your name, please join the candidate at the front of the stage and complete the hooding ceremony. We will begin our hooding ceremony with those students who have achieved a master's degree, the highest degree awarded by Brevard College. Master's candidates, if you'll please rise and approach the stage. Gabriel Christian Covington being hooded by Joshua Wilkie. Brittany Alicia Franks hooded by Abby Pardee. Holden Michael Turner hooded by Karen and Scott Melligan. Emma Christine White, hooded by Karen Melligan. Destiny Alexis Williams, hooded by Donald Hudson. Sarah Brooke Woodbury, hooded by Andrew Westick.
At this time, we will recognize our bachelor's candidates for the hooding ceremony. Freddie Lee Aiken III, hooded by J.R. Thomas. Caroline Graylin Andrews, hooded by Rebecca Alviani. Kendrick McLean Austin, hooded by Cameron Austin. Zion Matthew Barjalo, hooded by J.R. Thomas. Jerome Lewis Bass, hooded by Michael Moreshi. Anne Marie Horner Bates, <laughs> hooded by David and Kathy Gresham. Gabriel Albert Bernhard, hooded by Daniel Toot. Savannah Elizabeth Blankenship, hooded by Michael Moreshi. Eli Kane Bloom, hooded by Cole Hairston and Scott Eggert. <laughs> Bryant Joseph Bowl, hooded by Cameron Austin. Francesco Bonametti, hooded by J.P. Suarti. Cedric Charles Brooks, hooded by J.R. Thomas. <laughs> Meredith Beard Brown, hooded by Lisa Boucher. Bethany Lynn Bryan, hooded by Sherrod Creasman. Aaron Lee Butts, hooded by Chandler Ryan. Daquan Jamal Kane, hooded by Sterling Woodruff. Zion Taylor, Tyler Kane, hooded by Lisa Boucher. Owen Reed Campbell, hooded by Shirley Arnold. Giuseppe Capello Real, hooded by Alessandra Tabelloni. Brian Cardona, hooded by J.R. Thomas. Anna Marie Carpenter, hooded by Allison O'Leary. Ashton Elaine Cashwell, hooded by Margaret Brown. Yulia Serguta, hooded by Michael Moreshi. Savannah Marie Colliver, hooded by Cole Hairston. Paris Idris Crawford, hooded by J.R. Thomas. Stamati Damalois, hooded by Kristen Hewitt. Benjamin Douglas Davis, hooded by Andrea Bacamfuso. Luis Dos Santos, hooded by Kyle Knott. Scott Kennedy Douglas, hooded by Debbie Dana. Alexander McClellan Eaton, hooded by Clayton Sheehan.
Rosa Alicia Eberhardt. Put it by Joshua Wilkie and Jesse Tucker. J.L. Renee Amen. Put it by Don Hakowski. Michael Allen Fader. Put it by Daryl Patrick. Wesley Bryce F Fletcher. Put it by Hernan Biava. Haley Marie Flippen. Put it by Jesse Tucker. Reed Michael Foreman, hooded by J.R. Thomas. Mary Margaret Frail, hooded by Robert Dye. Dylan Boyce Freeman, hooded by Quentin Overocker. Riley Thomas Freeman, hooded by Mario Pinto. Jacob Riley Fitterberg, hooded by J.R. Thomas. Edan Guyardo Ortiz, hooded by Michael Moreshi. Gabriela Ariana Galvan, hooded by Catherine Parnell. Jessica Brooke Garland, hooded by Kristen Hewitt. Alex Christopher Glaze, hooded by Michael Moreshi. Emma Grace Gooch, hooded by Joshua Wilkie. Kayla Rosanna Gray, hooded by Sarah Mavidi. Sarah Nicole Hakowski, hooded by Andrea Bacanfusa. Vanitas Alexander Hamilton, hooded by Allison O'Leary and Lisa Boucher. Tyler Glenn Harrison, hooded by J.R. Thomas and Cameron Austin. Autumn Marie Hegner, hooded by Sarah Mavidi. Alyssa Lynn Hetherington, hooded by Jennifer Frick Rupert. Just wait on a second. Carolyn Marie Hoy, hooded by Beth Banks. Christian Cheyenne Humphreys, hooded by Hernan Biava. Sarah Jane Hutchins, hooded by Megan Kaiser. Taylor Lynn Hutchings, hooded by Michael Moreshi. Tammy Elizabeth Hyatt, hooded by Michael Moreshi. Jarrett Carl Isaac, hooded by Michael Moreshi. Gwen Piper Jennings, hooded by Kenneth Kleski. Casey Durham Jones, hooded by Adam Mills. Taylor Zane Kennedy, hooded by Sarah Mavidi. Eli Thomas Kessinger, hooded by Kristen Hewitt. Allison Louise Kugoy, 
included by Brad Jones. Autumn J. Kramer, included by Kristen Rosato. Reagan Ashley Lane, hooded by Chad Holt. Yuri Tortosa Leal, hooded by Rachel Hillier. Anne Renee Page Lewis, hooded by Elise Fosnight. Mary Margaret Lewis, hooded by Megan Kaiser. Wren Lipman, hooded by Jamie Woody. Noah Kristen Martin, hooded by Sarah Mavidi. Anthony Joseph Martino Jr., hooded by Michael Moreshi. Tamia Alize McGay, hooded by J.R. Thomas. Tyler Patrick Miranda, hooded by Charles Wallace. Jocelyn Nicole Mitchell, hooded by, hooded by Roya Tomasabi. Ashley Marie Mitchell, hooded by Kristen Hewitt. Olivia Yvette Monahan, hooded by Lisa Boucher and Allison O'Leary. Parka Elizabeth Moore, hooded by Jesse Tucker. Toby Benjamin Naylor, hooded by Kristen Hewitt. Jaden William O'Leary, hooded by Michael Moreshi. Caitlin Abigail Olive, hooded by Bree Sheeran. Jesus Antonio Ol Olmedo Martinez, hooded by Mel Bringle. Augustine Oneto, hooded by J.P. Suarte. Mary Waite Hamrick Perry, hooded by Jenny Kafsky. Chandler Seth Phillips, hooded by Sarah Mabiti. Sarah Gray Poss, hooded by Allison O'Leary. Siobhan Catherine Potter, hooded by Ryan DeGarmo. Alexandria Ann Puksh, hooded by Michael Moreshi. Grace Alyssa Pukas, hooded by Kristen Hewitt. Brianna Page Queen, hooded by Kristen Hewitt. Kristen Alexander Ramsey, hooded by Cameron Austin. Joshua Allen Rankin, hooded by Michael Moreshi. William Reap, hooded by Kevin Phillips. Nicole Resendez Trejo, hooded by Michael Moreshi. Daniel Raposo Martins Ribeiro, hooded by JP Suarte. Serena Pearl Rogers Lucky, hooded by Michael Moreshi. 
Nisa Rosales, hooded by Stacy Workman. Reese Torres Rubio, hooded by J.R. Thomas. Amber Nicole Saunders, hooded by Arnon Biava. Miles William Schaefer, hooded by Jordan Cook. Martin Laundy Schroeder, hooded by Robert Cabin. Ansley Elizabeth Schwab, hooded by Jenny Kafsky. David Emmanuel Seeley, hooded by Kristen Hewitt. Daniel Jeremiah Shook, hooded by Jordan Cook. Hannah Michelle Stepp, hooded by Michael Moreshi. Jamie Renee Stewart, hooded by Arnon Biava. Jessica Sierra Tinhai, hooded by Allison O'Leary. Kimberly Nicole Thacker, hooded by Michael Moreshi. Lindsay Renee Toll, hooded by Alice Welburn. Caleb Michael Trent, hooded by Ryan DeGarmo. Zachary Denton Trent, hooded by Robert Dye. Journey Nichelle Tyler, hooded by Donald Hudson. Brandon Edward Unex, hooded by Stacy Workman. Leviathan Matthew Tinney, hooded by Marie Jones. Aaliyah Alexandria Bell Vaughn, hooded by Stacy Workman. Jamarcus Devon Walker, hooded by Miranda Nash. Tristan Cole Wallace, hooded by Sam Eastridge. Elizabeth Nicole Weathers, hooded by Allison O'Leary. Joshua Cole Whetstone, hooded by Michael Moreshi. Maverick Shane Whitley, hooded by Vance Reese. Joseph Daniel Wilkinson, hooded by Debbie Dana. Samantha Marie Wilson, hooded by Nicole Potts. Curtis Reed Windham, hooded by Robert Cabin. Quincy Keyshawn Yancey Carter, hooded by Miles Leathers. Mitchell KQ Yoder, hooded by Kenneth McCleskey. William Taylor Young, hooded by Andrea Bacanfusa.
please join me in a prayer for the graduates. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with righteous indignation at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. May God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done. Now may that source of peace meet you at your point of needs. May that source of peace become present among you. And may that source push you to realize the greatness that lies within. Amen.